Hey everybody, this is my Discoria Discolor and it doesn't look that impressive right now, but let's have a quick sneak peek at what this will look like in two months time. Ta-da! Crazy, right? Well, that escalated really quickly, so let's have a look at what I did to make this grow. Hey Brad! Discoria Discolor is also known as ornamental yam, so it's very similar to the edible yams that we know. They're basically like little potatoes that live underground. Every year this goes dormant during winter, and then when spring comes, um, it grows really, really quickly and starts spreading really fast. It's now going into its fourth growing season, so I've had a little bit of experience with this plant. Last year, around May, all of the leaves started dying and I just completely chopped back all of the fo foliage and I, I didn't do anything else. I also stopped watering it. So in this pot, there are a bunch of little potatoes, little yams. Um, they are called corms officially. And I, I honestly don't know how many there are because they are multiplying themselves with every season. So. I know, I suppose we'll see how much it will grow this year and how many leaves it will get me, but I don't know how many corms are in that pot at this stage, unfortunately. It is in a 20 centimeter pot and it is in a mix that is a little bit finer than my normal aeroid mix. They have really fine roots and they're really thirsty and they really don't like drying out uh, while growing. So it is a mix of, there's a little bit of bark, a little bit of cocoa chunks, but predominantly it is cocoa peat and perlite. So it is a little bit finer, not quite as chunky as my normal aeroid mix, so that it can retain moisture better. Alrighty, so let me bring it closer. So I started watering it um, about mid uh, October when it started getting nice and warm and it's finally coming back out of dormancy. So let me come a bit closer so you can hopefully see that. So there are about four shoots that are now finally coming out of this pot over here and they're still really, really small. Brettles, come in. But these climb like a sweet potato vine. So they're gonna send out runners and they're gonna try and attach to anything that they can attach to. So if you have this in the greenhouse, they're gonna start attaching to other plants. They started attaching to my, um, my blinds, my curtain, like everything. They're honestly gonna attach to anything they want. So I wanna give it a trellis, just a normal vegetable trellis. It absolutely does not need a moss pole. It's not an aeroid and it doesn't have aerial roots that could take advantage of that. Um, of that moss pole. So I'm going to give it a vegetable trellis and it's going to look quite large for now. So I'm not just going to give it one. What I want to do is I want to give it two veggie trellises on top of each other. So it's going to be approximately 180 centimeters in height, which seems like a very large trellis right now. But trust me, over the next couple of weeks, this will really escalate. So I put a stake in here first just a normal garden steak. I hope I didn't ruin too many roots and or little yams down there by sticking it in in hindsight, but it is what it is. And I'm just gonna cable tie the first veggie trellis to my, um, to my garden steak. Now I've got the veggie trellis just at Bunnings as always. And then I'll take the second veggie trellis, put it here. And I will cable tie this also to the garden stake. And then I'll also cable tie the two veggie trellises together. Beautiful. That should be fine. So now for the next couple of weeks, I want to make sure that I really don't let the mix dry out because that could just send it straight back to dormancy. But right now it doesn't have any leaves yet, so it doesn't need a whole lot of water. I gave it a thorough watering and it's in a large pot, right? So it should have plenty of, um, plenty of water available right now. And I'm just going to monitor for these little shoots to start finding their way and climbing up the trellis. And we'll see each other again in a couple of months time or maybe even less let's see how fast this can grow hello a month later it is looking like this so there are a lot of little plants at the base now a lot um probably 20 ish or so and they start sending out these little feelers almost and they find the pole and then they start just twisting around 
the support or like the trellis uh, climbing up. These leaves come out teeny tiny like this one over here and then slowly over time they start inflating. So I'm not sure if these leaves are done inflating or if they're going to get any larger. But for now it's looking good. It is taking a little longer than expected though and it's taking a bit longer than the last couple of years. So I think we had a quick, uh, we had a pretty late start to the summer and we had a pretty cold start to the summer over here as well. We still haven't had these really, really nice warm temperatures that we are kind of expecting normally to have uh, in December in January, essentially. So maybe it's just a little light this year. Maybe it's just going to be a bit slow. Maybe this is just not going to be a good season for it. We don't know. But I mean, it still looks pretty, but I, I remember it being faster from last year. But let me show you one more thing if Brad lets me. These leaves also have the most amazing red backs. So pretty. So yeah, I really, really, really love this plant and I can't wait for the plant to fill the entire trellis. Reynolds, <laughs> you're so cute today. Okay, well, I'll see you. Well, I see you and I see you. I don't know how long this is gonna take. Alrighty, so it's exactly been two months since I filmed the beginning of this video where I gave my Discoria Discala the trellis and well, it has now reached the top of the trellis. It still has a little bit of potential to become much thicker, but from a height perspective, that's it. Um, well, technically it's not. It keeps wanting to climb, but I'm actually cutting off the top because, well, I don't know where else it's supposed to go. To be really honest with you, I didn't do anything to make this plant grow that quickly. That's actually in the plant's DNA. It's like a sweet potato vine, for example. They grow really, really quickly during growing season and then they go dormant during winter. So I didn't do anything to make it grow particularly fast. Anybody can make it grow that fast if you look after it correctly. So what have I done to, you know, at least make sure that it's happy? It likes a lot of light. You guys are currently on my balcony. It's a northwest facing, you know, full window, floor to ceiling. And this one is usually located right in front of the window. So it gets probably the most light out of all of the plants that you can see in frame at the moment. It's also super thirsty. Well, it's growing really fast, has a lot of really paper thin leaves that can't really store much water. So I'm watering this every second to third day despite the fact that it's in quite a large 25 centimeter pot. I'm not worried about overwatering this plant. I don't think you could really overwater this plant. It uses so much water. I'd more worried about underwatering and you would see underwatering by the leaves curling a little bit or the plant just not really producing new growth because it doesn't have the water available. All of this biomass obviously needs a lot of water. Um, so yeah. I also use my normal GT foliage focus fertilizer every, with every second watering. So I water it twice a week, but I fertilize it once a week. I'm still in a weak dilution. Maybe I should have given, maybe I should give it a little more. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll give it a little more going forward, given that it's growing so fast at the moment. And apart from that, really the only thing you need for this plant to thrive is a support system. I've actually done a two-day time lapse and I put it on the side of the screen for you to check it out right now. This plant is, it, I feel like National Geographic's actually, this plant is looking for something to climb on. So you can see how it like spins its vine around until it finds something and it can wrap itself um, onto that. Which also means if you're growing this in a greenhouse, for example, it will legitimately take over everything. I purposely don't have this plant right next to any other plant. I used to have it right next to my Adansonia, for example, and these little vines would just go in and out through all the holes of my Adansonia leaves, making it impossible to separate in the end without actually me wanting, uh, having to cut this plant. So if you grow this in the greenhouse, it will take over everything. If that's what you want though, if you want to fill a large space really quickly, then this is the perfect plant for you to get. However, keep in mind, it's not gonna last all year. So probably by March, April-ish, so probably in three months time, this plant or the leaves will eventually just 
fade a little bit. The color won't be as beautiful anymore. Um, and then it's time for me to just cut it all back and wait for the next growing season. Now this year, or like, well last year, I didn't do anything. I just cut it, cut all the vines off and then I just left the pot there and I just didn't water it until it was summer again or like spring summer again. I reckon I should have probably given it a repot before I started putting the trellis in because these leaves, while they're still really, really pretty, I don't really see a huge increase or change to what this plant looked like last year. So I should have probably given it fresh medium, maybe assess whether it needs a larger pot. Would have also been a good opportunity for me to kind of do a bit of a stock take and see how many of these bulbs are actually in the pot right now. I honestly don't know. Um, it is whatever I potted up uh, two years ago, which two years ago was in a tiny pot. So um, I reckon that would have multiplied heaps, but I'm in the unknown until winter, which uh, so definitely next year when it comes to winter, I'll actually take them out of the pot. I just store them in a dry, dark space over winter. And then when it comes to summer, I pot them up in fresh new medium. I do know that with changing light exposure, these leaves can change in color. I've seen them being a little bit darker. I've seen them have almost like a mosaic kind of uh, pattern and so on. So you can definitely play around with it a little bit and assess how the leaves change based on how much light you're giving it. But before I wrap it up, I do want to show you the backside because I think the backside is actually my favorite. There we go. This is what it looks like from the back. And you can probably see there's so many little vines that are now coming up the bottom. So only three vines have really made it all the way to the top, but there's many, many smaller vines now starting to fill out the gaps. So this is going to become really, really lush. So keep an eye out for this in any of my future um, houseplant tours and so on. I'm really, really happy with this plant, but it is definitely a special commitment. And I'm not willing to commit any more space to it than this trellis. So anything that's now kind of growing off that trellis, I will start chopping. After you chop it, it will just reshoot in almost every node. So event, essentially every single node has the potential to give you a new shoot. So this can branch out really, really quickly. So yeah, it's definitely a really good problem to have too much growth and not knowing where to put all of that growth. Apart from that, really, of course, warm temperatures is what actually gets it out of dormancy. And from a humidity perspective, I haven't noticed a plant having any sort of preference between more humid environments or less humid environments. To be honest, I don't think it really cares. Really, the most important things are light, water, fertilizer, and of course, warm temperatures. Alrighty, I'll wrap it up over here. I don't really have that much more to say about this plant, but I hope you enjoyed this video regardless, and I hope you enjoy this plant and maybe you decide to grow this plant yourself this year round or well in the next growing season. If you like this video, I reckon you'll love the video I uploaded the other day where I talk about my top 10 favorite plants. It's definitely a visual feast. Make sure to not miss out on it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.